No in India story. I need not emphasize it further, but just to put in the right perspective, might need a little help. Yeah, here. High growth rate, prosperous middle class, fast emerging luxury salons and spas, more people willing to spend or invest on improving looks and well being. If the wife spends, it's an investment from her side. If husband looks at it, it's an expenditure. Beauty service outlet formats, just to give a perspective, a traditional, you know, as we all know, technology has a very strange way of, uh, you know, making you think twice. Should I have got this PPT or not? The barber shops, I lead out. The parlors, Salons, beauty clinics, spas, and lastly, the med spas. I categorize this into so many outlets. Barber shops, parlors, salons, clinics, spas, and med spas. Now, if you look at level of service offered, barber shops and parlors, basic hair trimming services, Parlors and salons, grooming services, pedicure, manicure, threading, waxing, basic facials and hair cutting. Also, obviously, uh, salons gives you hair coloring, hair dressing, hair designing and so on. High-end salons and clinics, beauty treatments for your pigmentation, dryness, dullness, face lifting, so on. Spas, mind and body care, med spas, corrective surgeries, and salon services along with it. What I'm saying now may look very fundamental and obvious to you all, but this is put in perspective of what my subsequent slides would be. If I look at what industry wants, and if I were to map, skills with the job profile. Now, now you'll get the context of this slide with the previous slides. If you look at what parlors and salons need, the profile of people, they need jack of all, who are skilled in beauty services, hairdressing and makeup. Whereas, if I take to the next level, beauty clinics and med spas, they require master of one skill, specialist, they are called as beauty therapist, aesthetician or cosmetologist, would not require jack of all. And they have great understanding of human body and functions. Just a brief about National Skill Development Corporation. Uh, you all are part of a growing economy. So there are, there are going to be uh, 500 to 600 million Indians in the age group of 15 to 59, when we turn 75 as a democracy, that is in 2022. And out of that, a sizable chunk will be in your industry. In keeping with an understanding that we need to manage this workforce, a three-tier structure has been made at the national level to manage skill development. You must know that till 2008, 95% of all organized training in this country was being done by the government. So only about 5% was outside the government. Gradually, we as private industry have now moved to 9.5%. Today, of every 100 children who are being trained, one, and, uh, about 10 children are being trained by the private sector, still 90% is being trained by the government. Hence that uh, 17 ministries. We represent you, we represent the private sector, and this is the kind of benefit that we can provide to you. Over 50% of the districts of our country today are covered by NSDC partners, and we cover most of the sectors in which there is high growth. I'm happy to tell you that even in beauty uh, segment, there are seven of our partners who are training for your industry. And uh, the, the interesting part is that a large number of people who are required in our country over the next uh, 10 to 12 years are all going to be minimally skilled. 
and that's the kind of workforce that we need to standardize and certify. Tomorrow there will be career paths in all industry sectors. Once a driver today is always a driver, so he can say, I have driven a car but he is still a driver. Similarly, most people, you know, people who are cutting hair, they just cut hair for the rest of their life because there is no progression. Tomorrow there will be progressions available. Luckily, I was in the retail industry where a large number of people who came to uh, my organization in 2006 as customers service associates are today managers in their store in about five years. We are looking for that kind of a formal career progression in all industry sectors, especially the informal sectors. Today we have no clarity on how our sector will look tomorrow. Do we know what kind of creams will be available tomorrow to do uh, a facial? Do we know what kind of safety regulations the government is going to put in place? We have got no idea. So we need to have some visibility into what kind of requirement of manpower we need tomorrow. So the qualitative requirement, as well as the qualitative requirement, the quantitative requirement, what is the kind of growth, if you are going to grow nine times, with geography, in what kind of business? Is it going to be the salon business, the spa business, the small time business, whatever else? That is all called the labor market information. Now that will be ported on a website and if I am a child in class 9th, 10th, 11th or a 12th class dropout or anyone, I can go into that portal and see that in Bhubaneswar area, what are the opportunities available for me, what are kind of career growth parts are available. That's the first box on the left which the sector skill council does. So for you as the uh, leaders in the business, it will provide you visibility on the supply side. What are the kind of trends that children are in, let's say, government schools in a particular area, in English medium schools, school dropouts, what kind of trends do they have? How are they looking at your industry? That's the kind of visibility you will get. What kind of salaries? That's a labor market information. If you go to our website, you can see a sample of what labor market information can be.